Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date is February 7th, 2020. 20! Messed up last time, I was in 2019. It's still early in the year. It's okay, I can mess this up sometimes. Uh, time is 1.49 p.m. Getting started a little bit earlier than normal today. Usually we kick things off around like 3 or so. But mainly because we only have a couple things to talk about. We just have a lot of stuff to talk about within those couple of things. We're going to do a follow-up today on Warcraft 3. And the coronavirus. The two biggest stories that are happening right now in the game space. Yes, even the coronavirus is getting headlines in the game space. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, so, what are you guys talking uh, So, first, we should go ahead and welcome my co-host here. Chat, thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wrong day. It's the 8th of February for me. Duh! Well, it's fine. You could just record this yesterday. I don't know. Uh... So yes, we do have a number of... Hello, YouTube people. <laughs> we do have a number of articles to talk about concerning World of Warcraft... Sorry, Warcraft 3. Uh, last week, obviously, it was launch week. It was not a very good week for Blizzard. Um, they actually very specifically came out and said that it's been a hard week. But we're not going to start there. We're going to start with the... Um, was it Monday? They put out a post to the community. Talk a little bit about the... Uh, just basically their launch and, and all that stuff. Uh, it's been considered a non-apology, which it is. It's not an apology. It's just basically Blizzard saying, this is what we, uh, 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 this is what we have found from the feedback. And we're, we are uh, sorry that it wasn't what you expected. Uh, and so this is the this is the important thing I want to bring up. So it says right here, it says, first off, uh, we want to say that we're sorry to those of you who didn't have the experience you wanted. And we'd like to share our plans for what's coming next. Now, we had a laundry list of things that were that we dug up from the community and, uh, and talked about last week in terms of things that were wrong. Um, there was like custom campaign stuff I was missing. Uh, uh, there was like uh, artwork issues with between like the two versions and all this stuff. There was uh, uh, animation hitches and all this, like where it looked like it was like 20 frames per second, which might still be an Issue, I'm not sure. Um, features that were previously available in the original Warcraft 3 uh, classic that were overwritten where you couldn't toggle them off or on unless you were to get reforged. So there was just a number of things that, um, well, that really, really made the community very angry. And I actually have not checked their Metacritic, uh, actually not even today. So let me actually go ahead and, and pull this up real quick. I'm curious where the Metacritic is right now. Um, I have not looked at this before this, so this is going to be totally a surprise. It was a 0. 0.7 when we did the show last week, and I heard it got down to 0. 0.6, so I'm not quite sure where it's at. Uh, I'm not sure if this page is even going to load, actually. Am I still live? I am. That's really weird. Uh, oh, we try to F5 that. Boop, boop, boop. Well, looks <laughs> Metacritic is going to just come up whenever they're ready. We'll come back to that. That's weird. Last you heard, it was uh, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.4, so kind of flipping, floating around there. Hammer, by the way, thank you. Alerts turned off. Um, but thanks. So. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess, I hope that Metacritic comes back up. That's weird, Metacritic is not up right now. It must be the coronavirus. So I don't know where they're at right now, but we'll wait and see if it loads. But I'm guessing it probably didn't go up. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. It's like, did it go up? It's like, is it, is it a 0.8? No, I don't think so. I, don't th I think it's uh, probably going to be staying pretty steady. It, and if anything, it's going to take a lot to make it um, go up. Uh, the lowest game is 0.9 now. Okay, does it, is the site loading for you guys? Let's see, regardless of 0.5, 0.4, it doesn't mean it's now officially worse than day one's Gary incident. Uh, 0.4 was day one Gary's incident, so being tied for last, or being tied for the worst, is it's it's not that good. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of things that they did address in this initial uh, in this initial uh, uh, write-up here, this... Uh, where they talked about, you know, all the individual concerns and all this stuff. They said they're not going to address all the individual concerns, which makes sense because, you know, there's a lot of people that are experiencing a bunch of different issues. Some people are experiencing issues that are so minor that it's not something they're going to address here because there's that many minor issues. Like, there's no way they'd be able to cover every single one of them. Uh, day one, Gary's incident is 0.9 now, though. Okay, so they boosted it. That's so funny. Oh, my God. Uh, Metacritic crash crashes with a 503. Okay, cool. So first it was Twitter that was acting weird for a second, and now it's... Uh, no, no, there it is. All right, so 0.5. <laughs> so it uh, it did go down, uh, but it also came up. 
It's at 27,451 ratings. That's a lot of ratings. I, what is like, what is that? Uh, let's, let's go to best games. Let's see what like their best games, like, like number 27,451 seems like a lot. That's how it ever loads. Actually, we'll come back to it. Um, uh, it's they've said uh, Blizzard said that they've identified bugs uh, causing colors and shading to look different from the original Warcraft three. So this is like uh, just more um, uh, patches that are going in to address some of the the visual issues that they they've encountered that I, you they guess they didn't catch when, when they were testing. Uh, and then it says. And this is the kicker. This is the part that really pisses people off. Uh, it says, as we talked about last year at BlizzCon, we did not want the in-game cutscenes to steer too far from the original game. We went a little deeper into the thought process behind that uh, at the show. But the main takeaway is that the campaigns tell one of the classic stories in Warcraft history. And we want to preserve the true spirit of Warcraft 3 and allow players to relive those unforgettable moments the way they are or were, as it were. Um... Personally, I think this is just a complete bullshit answer. Uh, and I'm sorry if there's somebody from Blizzard watching this, but you have you you cannot tell me that this is like when you're advertising the game with the cutscenes from the culling. Probably right now, probably right now, I could go over there and take a look and I'll see that they're still using the same damn videos and cutscenes and everything from the culling. I don't have to look, I know it's there. Um it's just it's it's it, it's to me i would say it's bait and switch now i'm not a lawyer right but if i was the one if i bought this game looking at those graphics and looking at those animations and all that and then i got to the actual culling inside of uh or like in the game itself and saw that it wasn't like that i would say that's a bait and switch you show me all these great crazy like cinematics and everything it's like wow this is amazing experience is a whole new way and then you get in and you see for the very first cinematic that's basically exactly the same um it's it's sad. <laughs> Pretty sure change the camera angles like the trailer version won't change the story. Won't change the story. Yeah, the, the, the story won't change, but you're advertising it as being a cinematic adventure, and then you don't actually put that into the game. Uh, they did say that they talked about it at BlizzCon. I don't know how how in depth they went. I feel like if they were to if they talked about it in depth, uh in terms of like, well, like, for example, if they sat down and said Hey, you know what? We're thinking of not putting in all of these cinematics that we've built out in the same fashion that we did the culling. I think that would have been a much bigger headline. I can't imagine something like that would have been swept under the table, like especially from people that were just looking, looking for stuff that um, that Blizzard is doing wrong after the Diablo incident. Uh, you said they did at the last BlizzCon. I can't. Maybe, maybe I just don't remember the article. Maybe there's articles that came out that said, "Hey, all the animations, all the cinematics are canned." Uh, but I, I really don't remember seeing that at all. So if that's something that if you have, if you have an article from last year, um, but it was behind a paywall. Oh yeah, well the actual uh, the actual event where they talk about it. Yeah, that's behind a paywall, which makes it very difficult to verify. By the way, um, but I suppose. <laughs> Oh man. So yeah, they did say they talked about it last year, but the, 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 regardless, you know, the, the comments are not that pleased with this. Um, the whole subreddit is still not doing too, too well. Uh, they did put out, uh, they, they, they did actually set it up so that you can get a refund. With, it says no questions asked, so you can put it, where do ads go? Because you autoplay videos, you fucks. Um, but yeah, they allow uh people now to go through and refund uh, just if you own the game i actually checked to see if i did pre-order because i wasn't sure if i did pre-order the game so i logged in and checked to see if i pre-ordered and i did not thankfully uh because i would have just re refunded it right there i'm not going to bother playing the game i have the original i actually bought um after last blizzcon or not last uh 2018 blizzcon i went through and uh i bought um uh, F frozen throne reign of chaos so i bought i bought the original warcraft 3 set from from blizzard I still have those somewhere, but I have not installed them. Uh, and if I do plan on installing them and playing them, I'll have to make sure that the Battle.net launcher is not in so that way it doesn't overwrite my shit. Uh, but can I get all Warcraft 3? Yeah, exactly. Warcraft 3. Uh, so they still advertise with the cutscenes, but their excuse now is, hey, we told you this in an event that you had to pay to watch, which most of you didn't, so your own fault. Yes. Yeah. No. No, that's... That's, I mean, I think it's a pretty fair summary of exactly what they're saying. Um, and like I said, like people are like looking for 
uh, for things to to beat up Blizzard about, at, especially after the Diablo thing. And so this is like you know the Diablo uh, um, uh, mobile shit that happened in 2018. So in 2019, if they come out and they say, oh, you know what, the Warcraft 3 cinematics team doesn't exist anymore. We're not going to do the cinematics for this game the way we advertise them. I think people would have said something. I really, truly think they would, they would have been like, oh, wow, it's another classic that's been ruined by Blizzard. And no, they just continued, you know, offering it up as, uh, you know, s- selling it with the animations and everything that they ad- advertised to us uh, at BlizzCon. But yet those things are not in the game. It's, I mean, to me, it's bait and switch. Like, I feel like this is like a class action lawsuit just waiting to happen. Um, or maybe it is happening and we'll, that'll be next week's story. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so yeah, you could go through and you could just, you could just sign up and get yourself a refund if you did purchase the game. No questions asked. They even says right here, Blizzard stands by the quality of our products and services. Normally we set limits and refund availability of game based on what time since purchase and whether or not it's been used. However, we want to give players the option they feel you need to refund if they want to, blah, blah, blah. Um, they'll do refunds for now. Not sure for how long. Yeah. Well, the, the, the refunds are there for people that want it. It's, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, a better step in the right direction would be to come out and just say flat out like that we yeah we cut these we cut these cinematics um because blank and we gave you guys a game that we sold you guys a game I mean they can't say this because they'd be admitting to to uh false advertisement but uh, but you know blizzards had a uh you know they they've had a hard week man um <laughs> They've had a hard week with uh, with all the stuff that that they've been going through. So honestly, it's been a bit of a hard week. It's been hard for Blizzard guys. We should feel sorry for them, you know. Uh, there's an investor lawsuit already in the works. I jump on the refund ASAP. Not not have another No Man's Sky fiasco. I can't imagine that they're gonna pull a No Man's Sky on this. I just I can't see Blizzard just I can't see Blizzard doing that. Um, although I'll be hap I'll, I'll I'll happily you'll praise them for doing so. I just, I just don't see them. I feel like they're beyond that point. I feel like hello games almost needed to do that. Otherwise hello games is just finished, right? Uh, blizzard can power through this. Like I said, last week, blizzard makes so much money on other things. I don't think they give a fuck about Warcraft three. I think that was there just to see if they could cash in on a classic, which of course they're a business. They're going to do whatever they can to make money. Um, and when they saw that the pre-orders were, Hmm. Uh, well then that ended up being a, uh, well, they just ended up cutting, cutting corners. Uh, what is this? They didn't really try. Okay. So you found an art you found a link here. Let's go and grab this and pull it up. Thank you for that timestamp, man. Dark, give me that. Dark, thank you so much. Last year, as you saw with the calling, we, we were really aggressive on, on some change, I think. And, and telling the story from a different perspective. And, and we got what we thought was, you know, fairly, uh, divisive feedback of the camp of like don't change my game versus like oh this is cool it'll welcome a new audience and and then we went back to the shop and as we were iterating we just we weren't happy where we were where we were going with that kind of culling treatment as it became talked about in the office and and we decided to dial it back a bit so all of the cameras have been reworked as we've been talking about, yeah. all of the models are new, and there's tons of new animations, gestures, and things. All that the cameras being re- reworked, isn't it? Like basically almost the same. Um, make yeah. them seem and more real. Arthur's not doing a spell every time whenever he wants yeah. to make an and, action. And, and we did add adjustment. some environment stuff too. Um, so we did yeah. an overhaul on Silvermoon, um, added a bunch more, you know, buildings. All right, I think I've heard enough. But just made we we made it more like the old one. Yeah, it's it does it still sounds like they try to cut their losses because they probably didn't get the pre-orders they wanted. Otherwise, I mean if they had like crazy pre-orders, I feel like people that they would have said, yeah, this is an opportunity for us to actually sell more by putting resources into this and updating the cinematics. I feel I feel like if they went through and did an actual overhaul of like all the cinematics, like that was such a huge selling point was a story, right? It's, so it's like if they made that a cinematic experience. The way they did the culling, I feel like that would have they would have sold more. But you know, they decided to cut their losses. But like I said, man, like they, if they're making thirty million dollars per team that signs up for Overwatch League, they don't give a fuck about what they do with with, with Warcraft Three. Those five dudes that are sitting up there are probably the only fucking people on the team. It pisses me off, man, because Warcraft One and Two were like my shit when I was a kid, and then Warcraft Three came out, and you know, I kind of was really into it because it went run, went run on my computer. But still, like, it makes me mad that like they they take something that was fine being old, right, and then they try to like gentrify it, and they failed horribly. It was like a terrible house flip. 
You get in, you buy the house, it's falling apart. It's, it's, it's infuriating. It really is infuriating. So, uh, how much did Reforge make originally? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how much. I don't think they release, they're going to release those numbers. Um, Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3, anyway, so just make one. <laughs> yeah, so as long as they don't trust, touch Warcraft 2, that will be fine. It would have been a hell of a lot more work, too, though. Yeah, it would have been more work, but that's the thing they're committing to. You know, like, by... by and, and also, and also, like, they kind of paint themselves into a corner with this, so we didn't want to give everything the culling treatment, so we decided to kind of scale that back a little bit. But we also decided to leave it up for advertising. Come on, man. Don't fucking do that. It just, it just looks scummy. It just looks scummy. Um, what is it? What is this? Like one of those bad episodes of Trading Space with straw on the walls. They fail horribly. Isn't that what Blizzard's constantly past few years? They've, I mean, I can't really cite too many big wins for, for, um, for Blizzard. If that's your question, like, have they been failing horribly at things? I think that's, uh, that's, you know, subjective, but, um, I think if we want to say how many big wins have they had over the past couple of years, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I, I feel, I, I mean, yeah, I've, I've been a Blizzard fan for a long time. Obviously. So have you, a lot of you guys, um, it definitely feels like they had, they peaked their, their glory had peaked, the glory peaked back in somewhere between, you know, depending on what game you're playing, you know, 2010 or 20, 2009 and probably 2014 or something like that. I would say that's probably like, that was like the golden era and then, you know, after that, like, you know, I think they had like moments where it was like Overwatch is out. Oh man, people love the cinematics and everybody wanted to see the next cinematic for the next hero and all this stuff, the backstory, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but then people just kind of like just grew out of it and just, that was kind of it. So I don't know, man, like it doesn't really feel like it doesn't really feel like Blizzard has had a whole lot of wins uh, lately. And a lot of it is just because of their own doing, you know, like because of this, because of stuff like this. The corporate overlo overlords of everything only care about increasing profits for infinity. That's correct. That they want to increase profits, and and you know they saw an opportunity. Somebody on uh, on Reddit, uh, Natty Fatty or something like that, but he left a keep he left a few comments where he was saying, you know, as a Blizzard shareholder, uh, I don't. Ha I, I'm glad that they cut they cut and run on this because it wasn't going to make any money or something like that. And then someone was like, fuck your shareholder or whatever. And he's, and he's just like, well, thankfully, well, thankfully your share, your, your opinion on my being a shareholder doesn't have any impact on my share value or something like that. It's like, oh man, what an asshole. But that's basically, I mean, that's, that's, I, I would say that's kind of a, a sample of like what that mentality probably is. It's like, well, we don't give a fuck what the players think. Are they buying it or not? That's it. Are they buying it or not? They're, they're not buying it. Okay. Can it? Don't do it again. Cut features, whatever. <sighs> Since investors demand profits always go up every quarter. Exactly. And so that's the reason why, you know, people wonder why, you know, why, why did they delay the game? They couldn't delay the game because they had a release in, in that quarter. If they delayed the game one week, it would have been in this quarter. They just had their quarterly, uh, um, it would have been a different, yeah, because because the quarter end, not necessarily this week, but uh, recently. And so if they had pushed it back too far, it would have been in a different quarter. So yeah, they 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 had to release it. Um, Cheryl's act like a, like a quarter of making the same amount of money is somehow failing business. I know that's, that's, that's the world that we're in right now. If you're not making money until infinity, as was mentioned, then, uh, you're not, uh, you're not doing a good job. So Blizzard did put out a, um, a two gigabyte patch, uh, in this patch, I have a couple notes here. It says, mm, well, first off, there's uh, a phrase, uh, there's a, a quote here from, uh, J. Allen Brack and he says, Concerning Warcraft 3, and this was actually on the quarterly call, uh, which I was a little, a little surprised about. Uh, he says, concerning Warcraft 3 Reforged, honestly, it's been a bit of a hard week. Our community has come to expect really amazing things from us, and we've heard them, uh, we've heard from them that we did not achieve that bar. Yeah. Signed, J. Allen Breck. <sighs> so, yeah, they did do, uh, they do have a couple updates, a couple of things in this patch that came out. If those of you guys who are playing, or maybe you, you were planning on getting the game, uh, they, uh, they fixed an issue where starting locations were not obscured by Fog of War, which is hilarious. Uh, Whispers now include the name of the sender. I don't know how that slipped through. Uh, they still don't have leaderboards or clans, so uh, if that's something you were interested in, well, that's not in yet. All the refunds will be in the next quarter, though. So double hits. Well, honestly, I don't think it's going to be that big of a hit because I don't think they made a lot of pre-sales or just sales in general, like period. 
And so getting a refund on, you know, 10% of $10 <laughs> is just like whatever. So I don't think I don't think it's going to be I, I think that by addressing it on the quarterly call, all they were doing was maybe just just uh, just preempting any questions that might come up because shareholders will ask questions and they might ask some because they have asked like, you know, questions about player feedback before. And so by saying it's been a hard week. We didn't live up to these expectations, blah, 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 the standard, <laughs> the standard line. Um, you know, they're basically saying, don't ask us about this because we've already answered it. Refunds for Warcraft 3 Reforged had no material impact on our earnings this quarter. Someone just got off a quarterly call. <laughs> That's exactly what they would say, too. Uh, there would probably still be a whole bunch of people that would not refund regardless uh, of it's being, if it's being too much effort or whatever, yeah, too much effort, or they have faith that Blizzard is going to come through and, 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 and put all those things in, but we know they're not, they're not going to put in the, uh, um, the cinematics that's based, that's definitely not happening. So if you're waiting out for that, that's the only reason why I wanted the game personally is because I wanted to experience the game, like with like updated cinematics and all that. I wanted to experience it. Like I played the calling at, uh, at BlizzCon and that's a shitty thing too, by the way, if you didn't go to BlizzCon, you didn't get to experience the calling the way that we did. Like it was, it's, they did such a good job on all of that. Like such a good job of integrating all of that into this, the classic game. It was fantastic. Um, but yeah, you guys aren't going to be able to experience that because this didn't make the cut, I guess. Uh, what I want to know is, will those who didn't buy Reforge get the original, will get their game back? That's, that's a big question. And, and right now the answer is no, they're still working on issues between the two versions. You know, because of like the classic upgrade or whatever. Um, actually, it's, oh, they have a screenshots. Oh, cool. Here's how the main menu in Reforged looks, and here's how the main menu in Classic looks. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So you guys are gonna love this too. This I actually wrote this down, but I was like, I'm not gonna find a screenshot of this, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But this is a different article than I had originally looked at. So, uh, so, <laughs> so what they did is um, they made it so if you want to play Classic Reforged or Classic, you know. You click whatever they made a sepia exactly that's what they did so oh man no oh, it's just it's just 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 cheap cheap what can we do it's not gonna cost us anything just throw a filter on it it's ridiculous Oh man, I'm never gonna get a job, Blizzard. <laughs> Not at this rate. Uh, let's see. So the other thing we should talk about regarding Warcraft Three is their EULA. So Blizzard's claim that it owns Warcraft Three mods isn't just the standard fine print. User created content is subject to either exclusive or non-exclusive licenses. Know which you're agreeing to. I'll just tell you what it is. Um, do I have any notes for this? No, I don't. Just make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, so basically, exclusive or not? Sorry, non-exclusive, which is common, right? Which most sites have, most places, most places have, uh, is you make something and then you upload it to the Steam Workshop or Bethesda, you know, Nexus Mods or whatever. Uh, you're giving that site or that company non-exclusive um, license to promote it to use it in promotional materials uh to host it just to host it you need to have that non-exclusive agreement because then they are because then you're giving them the right to distribute that content exclusive means that they own everything and it's not a shared thing let me give you an example now this you should know that this has been in since uh uh starcraft remaster i think as they put it in like oh god was it a year ago or something like that or several months ago last year um but they have had it in but it wasn't it wasn't a big deal until warcraft 3 came out where a lot of actual mods spawn from uh or like big games basically spawn from from so uh it says if you use the software it says that you are giving blizzard ownership of your titles computer code themes objects characters character names stories dialogue catchphrases, locations, concepts, artwork, animations, sounds, musical compositions, audiovisual effects, methods of operation, and so on. Computer, that's enough. So you basically own everything. 
it's not just you give us the right to distribute it and maybe use it for promotion materials. You're saying everything, even catchphrases for whatever characters you put into your game, your mod. So I think that, yeah, modding in this in the Warcraft 3 scene is pretty much dead, like right out, just right out the gate, just basically done. Um, and that's just probably not going to change anytime soon because Blizzard is so afraid of Dota 3. <laughs> so let's say if we make a map that's based on Mario Brothers, that means Blizzard now owns it, but Mario is owned by Nintendo. Can we have them go at a Fight Club style? No, because another thing that was added to the EULA was that you cannot use any assets or any anything belonging to that's third party. Uh, they put that in specifically because of what you're describing right now. If they didn't put that in, then there'd be a conflict and we would have a Fight Club style, which would be great. Nintendo versus Activision Blizzard would be so good. Um, Blizzard has historically just taken everything from everybody. Like 60% of all wild quests are references to something else. Well, did they have an exclusive agreement for that content? Mm. Um, <laughs> so, oh man. The Dota lawsuit is something to bring up for sure. Dota, which originated in Warcraft 3, was a massive success. Valve saw that and created Dota 2. Dota 2, massive success. Blizzard saw that Valve took it and made Dota 2 and was like, oh shit, we should make something. Let's make Dota. So they made Dota. For a whole one BlizzCon, it was called Dota. And then Valve went at them. And it turned into a, a suit that was settled outside of court. And Blizzard ended up changing the name to Blizzard All-Stars, which I think a lot of us really liked because balls. Um, but then later they changed it to Heroes of the Storm. And now it's just dead. Uh, there was also the World of Starcraft mod that was made by fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see World of Starcraft, like that whole thing. You know, they, they, they had to go at it with, with them to tell me you got shut down or whatever because it's impeding on this. Uh, whereas they wouldn't even, that wouldn't even be a question now. Like now it's just like, no, you built it. Like it's just, it's, you built it in our system. It's ours. Like fuck off. It's ours. Um, did you ever see the Impossible Bosses Warcraft 3 map? It's basically raid bosses. I did not. Uh, my close pause. Yeah, they gave it the same acronym as the StarCraft 2 expansion. Um, Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, Heroes of the Storm. I know. I know. <laughs> Heart of the Swarm, Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, wasn't a very, uh, <sighs> I remember talking about this on, like, maybe it was a Game Breaker show or something like that, or maybe it was, uh, Don't Get Your Hopes Up. Uh, was it Don't Get Your Hopes Up? I'm not sure, actually. I remember we talked about this somewhere, and it was just like, what a joke. Like, I can't believe it. I think, but maybe it was actually, yeah, Don't Get Your Hopes Up, because Blizzard, because uh, Josh was working at Blizzard at the time. I remember even he was like, we're really good at acronyms or something like that. And he was cracking jokes about how good at acronyms there are. They are. And yeah, exactly. It was X of the Y it was like the joke. It's like, oh yeah, it was Digi who? Thank you, Ryan. They only cared about popular mods once it was picked up by another company. Talk about sitting on their laurels. Exactly. No, that's it. I mean, it's, it's, you know what it is? I don't want to say it's sitting on your laurels because I, I don't think that Blizzard made the, I, initially, I don't think they made the Warcraft 3 uh uh you know, uh war edits or whatever the whatever it's called um i don't think they made it with the express express purpose of if somebody makes something that's super popular we could turn that and spin that into our own game um we've been able to make custom maps and scenarios since warcraft one like that war edit.exe has been there basically since the beginning 1994 or something like that so that's been around forever uh and i think that they just did it because they wanted to give people an opportunity to make their own experiences in their game well somebody saw well instead of this just being an experience in that game let's make it our own game and we've seen this not just necessarily warcraft 3 like this is like every other game out there i mean look at um uh, you know, between like uh, CSGO, Half Life, Portal, I mean, uh, Daisy, um, uh, obviously Dota, uh, any of the auto chess stuff, which, like, by the way, what happened to auto chess? <laughs> it didn't last very long. Uh, every MOBA, you know, like all these things started off as like mods and other games and then, you know, became their own, uh, their own thing. So, uh, so unless they change the EULA, no one is going to make a serious game under their, under their game. Exactly. No, that's exactly right, Cinderai. Uh, they put it in that they cared about the fans being able to play more of the games. That's true. No, I mean, I'll say that's true. Yeah. I mean, now, now they're looking at it like, okay, we need to make sure this doesn't happen again. We need to make, maximize our, our potential earnings on this product. 
we need to put this EULA in place so that way we can own everything that comes out of it. But at the same time, it's a backhanded thing because now people are not going to build anything in it. It's a catch-22. The same with StarCraft 2 SC2 Editor. No one expected uh, X Defense maps and other custom maps to be suddenly be popular. Exactly. Auto is still pretty unpopular. Is it really? Uh, Counter Strike Team Fortress were mods. I couldn't remember which one it was, which one came first, because I remember like some of them were mods, but one of them, one of them was the original. I think Half Life was the original, right? Uh, how about that Eve Online? <laughs> Eve Online just existing in a literal other universe. <laughs> I read an article about War 3 development on the past week, and apparently the editor just had this dev working on it that loved over-engineering the hell out of it, so it just ended up this stupid, powerful, almost by accident. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But, but this time, they went a lot faster with capitalizing the popularity. At least Valve capitalized on the mods by convincing the mod makers to make companies and then making their mods into games. Yeah, that's right. Um, Team Fortress was from Quake, and then... Uh, we wanted to maximize what well, TF2 was was built on the right the, the right engine right yeah the current engine but yeah is that DDoS against the uh, evil oh I don't know about that I uh, they just wanted to pay for those custom game editors for their ideas something cool comes up uh, they could have uh, done the non greed thing and took the great mod made it uh, made it into a game with their team behind it and give the mod a portion of the profit that would be great but I I don't know I I don't know if they had, they definitely went really heavy handed with it. They really did go heavy handed with it. And it's, it's, it's painful to watch. It's so painful to watch that they just, you know, jumped out and just said, yeah, we're going to go ahead and just uh, own everything that comes out of it. And it's just, it just goes against what Warcraft three originally was. And you know, them writing over the original Warcraft three to me feels like that's their way of saying, you know, well, Warcraft three, old Warcraft three is also part of this EULA. Uh, and so all of this is just basically covered underneath one umbrella, like one piece of paper basically covers everything, which means retroactively everything ever made for Warcraft three belongs to, uh, or now belongs to Blizzard. Obviously it doesn't necessarily undo Dota two or anything like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you get a portion of uh, uh, the profit, it's like admitting that the creator deserves something and then they could theoretically argue that they should be paid more. That's a very good point, Teddy Torrent. That's the same thing that uh, uh, happens with like rent. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this already, or maybe this is just something that's like big out here because renting is such a big deal. Um, but if, if you're a landlord and somebody owes you rent and they come to you and they offer you $5, like, hey man, here, here's, here's what I have. Just hold this. They can legally say, and, and I can say to California for sure, but probably in other places, that that was for the rent and they accepted that money. So you're not, as a landlord, you're not supposed to, not supposed to take any money um, unless it's the full amount, unless you want that amount to be it. There's a balance to be struck between having rights to the content built on your platform and discouraging creators from putting effort to using your platform, and they've completely missed the mark. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, just to go back and close this out, we, you know, we saw that uh, on Metacritic, Blizzard had, what was it, 24,000 24, reviews. And I wanted to see what the, like, number one, here we go. So this is like the, this is the number one game. Oh, of course it is, Legend of Ocarina of Time. <laughs> of course it is. How many, how many reviews? 4,862. How about Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2? It's a classic. 514 ratings. This is, this is what a review bomb will get you. 3,365 ratings. These are the top games. The top games. Soul Calibur. 280 ratings. Isn't that crazy? Just crazy. Grand Theft Auto 5. Here we go. This should have a lot. Especially starting with Xbox 360. 3,807. 4,000. Huh? Huh? 1,000. And then Xbox One. Oh, that's the Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, so, Breath of the Wild. Huh? Last one. Last one. 13,608. So there we go. So finally we get something that has over 10,000, but you can see that it's still well shy of what, uh, of what Warcraft 3 Reforged got. So they definitely got review bombed. <laughs> For sure. Jesus. People are angry, have a tendency to make reviews compared to happy people. A basic rule of customer satisfaction rating. I do wonder, though, if uh, if I sorted that by worst, what those numbers would be. But I won't look at that right now. We'll just assume that they they probably have the most user reviews of any game on the platform. And if I'm wrong on that, I would love to see. I would love to see what has the most reviews and what that re what those reviews are and why and why. Uh, Gary's the Gary's uh, mod. Thing or the Gary, what a Gary's 
incident, whatever it's called. That was something that um, I should have looked at, but you know, we'll get that another time. Uh, so moving on. That's enough of Warcraft. That's enough of Warcraft 3 stuff. Let's go ahead and change. Let's go ahead and change the mood here. Wrong, wrong mood button. There we go. There we go. Um, moving on to the coronavirus. <sighs> da -da -da. All right. So why are we talking about the coronavirus on video game news? Because it's had a negative impact on video game related things. We got to talk about it. <laughs> are you flashing red lights for this? I know I do. Cover your mouth when you sneeze. Wash your hands. Please, if you have a cough, stay home. <laughs> stay fuck home. Uh, so there are 31,530 confirmed cases. Uh, most 99% of them are happening in, uh, in China still. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at the deaths on the right-hand side, 618 deaths in, uh, out of 630 happen in China. We have not had any deaths or hardly any deaths outside of that. It's all China. China, 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 and then one in the Philippines. Um, that was a big deal when that one happened in the Philippines because it was like, this is the first time we've had a death outside of China. Um, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be even more concerned if anybody in the NA ends up dying to this. So uh, you've had a call for a solid month. No one around, around me caught it. You're welcome, fam. Thank you, Lawrence. I appreciate that. Week 32 on coronavirus, remote workplace has been adopted nationwide as preferred practice. Yes. Um, I know that I myself have gotten uh, uh, emails from Declan School where they are encouraging families to stay home if uh, or kids. Not encouraging. No, sorry. That's the wrong word. They are demanding. They're, they're basically saying that you are not allowed back in school if you've been to China recently and you have to stay home for two weeks. And they actually even have a, um, a at-home learning plan or something like that that they rolled out specifically for these kinds of situations. Uh, and they're setting up kids on it right now. So it's, I mean, it's a very real a scare. It's everywhere, you know? Um, oh, yeah, Holly, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I even said, uh, did, I, did I mention last week that one of the um, cases is actually here in Santa Clara County? Uh, we don't know who, I think it was, oh, I think it was after, I think it was after the news last week. So, um, you know, last week I made a comment, maybe not on the news or not, but, um, yeah, there was a dude in front of me who well, I was at, uh, 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 I was at CVS or Walgreens and dude in front of me was like coughing and it was an older Chinese man. Um, and yeah, I mentioned before I, li I live in a predominantly Chinese neighborhood, uh, like Chinese, Vietnamese, Indian, right? Uh, definitely not white. <laughs> and you know, this is right in the midst of the scare and this guy in front of me is like coughing and everything. And I'm just like, Ugh, and I'm standing back. And I'm just freaked out. I'm just like anybody coughs. I don't care who it is. It just, it didn't help that the guy was also an elderly Chinese man. Um, anyways, come home, we do the news. And after the news, somebody linked an article or whatever. We got, I got a notification or it was Twitter, Twitter trending or something like that. And I was like, Oh, why is Santa Clara trending on Twitter? And it was like, Oh snap. Because we had a, uh, we had our first case and it's here. I wonder if it was that guy. <laughs> But it's scary when it's like that close to home, you know, it's like, it's like, it's here. It's actually here. Uh, no follow up on that. No follow up on that or anything yet. Just wear those disposable surgical masks. If you actually have to go out coronavirus or not. So there here's, here's the kinds of things that it's having an impact on here in the States or just, just in gaming general. Facebook expects coronavirus outbreak to impact Oculus Quest production. And so it says Oculus Quest has been selling out uh, in some regions due to high demand. That said, like other companies, we're experienced or ex we're expecting some additional impact to our hardware production due to the coronavirus. We're taking precautions to ensure the safety of our employees, manufacturing partners, and customers, and are monitoring the situation closely. We are working to restore availability as soon as possible. Uh, who else is experiencing issues? Uh, over here. Nintendo says delays to switch production shipping due to coronavirus is unavoidable. Next, yeah, next, I don't have an article on that, but I did read somewhere that next gen uh, consoles are likely to be impacted as well. Um, here's something that's a little bit closer to home because it's a game that we played here on the stream. Uh, coronavirus concerns lead to delay of the Outer Worlds switch ports. And also, I believe they're actually deciding to put a cartridge in the game. Like originally, I think you're just only going to get a key. Like you buy the actual, the actual game, like, like <laughs> from the store, you know, brick and mortar, and you buy it, and you're like open it up, and it's going to have like a key in it or something like that. I think they're actually they actually made a choice that they're going to um put the actual uh, uh actual cartridge in there. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Or card, not a cartridge. Um, 
Time to buy NBC gear. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, <laughs> NBC. Uh, let's see. So, and that was actually direct from that was actually direct from the uh, from the horse's mouth. We're delaying out of worlds on Nintendo Switch due to the coronavirus impacting the virtuous team virtuos team working on the port. To provide them enough time to finish development, we'll now be releasing the physical version on cartridge. That's what it was. That's right. There it is. So once we have a new launch date, we will let you know. To clarify, the team of Virtuos is okay, but their office has remained closed during this time. We're working with the team to determine uh, an update, uh, an updated development timeline, and we'll share more regarding a new launch date shortly. So I don't know if you guys know, but you know they they take they take two years off um, around their new year, or two years, two weeks off around the new year. They actually extended that week an additional so it's like three weeks off so we don't even really know like there's a lot of stuff we don't know about the coronavirus in terms of like its widespread impact or how widespread it is what kind of information we could trust there was a leak from tencent apparently uh that showed like some outlandish crazy numbers that if they were true that we'd be super fucked um but you know they were just like it could have just been an admin error someone just put too many commas in or something who knows but still it's uh it's it's obviously going to have a lasting impact on a number of things. Uh, it's it's not just that though. We still have more. Overwatch League, long travel logistical issues, coronavirus crisis combined, and pressure to test Overwatch League's vision. So basically, they're saying that uh, you know the Overwatch uh, League is not going to be happening in China. Um, well, pretty much until until further notice. Uh, the GSL Super Tournament for StarCraft is is also postponed. Uh, I was personally bummed about this. And this guy's cancel a major event for the sake of a global-wide exaggeration? Really? What an idiot. It's fucking Twitter. Fucking A. Uh, <laughs> fucking Jesus. So, yeah. So, I mean, like, everything is being impacted by this. Um, I mean, every other esport that is that take, take, takes place in China is just, like, not happening. And, and, and you know, GSL takes place in South Korea. And that's been impacted. Um, oh, I have one article remaining this month. So this is the this is my last article for this month, guys. <laughs> but it says coronavirus delays multiple esports tournaments. Companies donate millions to Wuhan. Uh, so in this case, this is like League of Legends. League of Legends tournaments were LPL were uh, is is delayed or postponed or canceled. And there's a couple other like mobile tournaments that were canceled as well. I'm sure you guys are really bummed about that. Uh, but yeah, just in general, like it's 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 having a fairly significant impact on just like mostly esports right now and production. Um, season finale of nudes next week. <laughs> Putting in actual cartridges at a gaming console. What a day when that becomes a selling point. I know. I'm I'm the guy that I buy cartridge for everything. Like I love having a cart for like for gaming i don't know what it is it's so convenient to just be able just to fire up the game and just have it there it's so convenient but at the same time having a cartridge i feel like i own it you know i feel like this is mine you know like we don't get that we don't really get that feeling anymore with software because we just like buy it and you know i have a key i have a key somewhere in my email from when they when i first bought it it's somewhere in there i don't really own it you know like i have i have my adobe uh, my original Adobe um, box from like 1.5. Then I have an Adobe CS6, I think, uh, box because I bought them. Like they're mine, and so I it's like it's this is this is mine to keep. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm glad they're postponing and they're gonna put a cartridge in. I might actually buy it again because I really love that game. Um, future special editions will be twenty dollars more for actual physical media with uh, with a digital costing regular full price. Freycord, I think that is a very accurate statement. <laughs> All I know, China uses 13 million gallons of gas a month on average. It's down to 10 million gallons. This seems not much, but that's 25. That's, that's, wow, Dre, that's some good stats. I didn't know that. But that's, um, that's really interesting stats because that just means that they're not going anywhere. They're not, I mean, especially considering they have an extra week off. Uh, always carts for my Switch. Yeah. Carts, baby. Uh, I prefer to get the carts for the Switch, but when I am in bed and need to change the cart to play a different game, well, I just play Tetris instead. You know, I, I have, um, they won't install anywhere, but he has them. <laughs> They'll install. <laughs> You're right. I don't have an optical drive. <laughs> so yeah, some of my software I can't install. Um, but uh, I do have I do have a number of games on my Switch that are like just kind of like secondary games, like uh, uh, Full Metal or Full. Oh my god, I just totally brain farted. It's that Metal uh, Metal Slug style. Game. It's like one of my favorite games. I can't remember what the hell it is. It's the Metal Slug style RPG with like with like Borderlands 
kind of like weapon you know, interchanging of parts and all that stuff. And I can't remember what it's called. Someone will think of it. Uh, Switch cards is probably just DRM in the future, still requiring download. Oh man, not Broforce, but that's that, that's a good guess though. No, not Steam World either. Although I do have that, I do have a couple because like, I do have a couple games that are um, that are in uh, uh, that are actually installed on the Switch itself. But yeah, having a cart for some of the bigger titles, that's the one I really want. That's when I that's what I really really want. I miss all the shelf of NES cartridges now. Box PC games don't even come with disc anymore. If they do, it's just installer to Steam. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But anyways, this is your uh this is this is your breaking news update <laughs> on the uh on not full metal fury sky. Can, God damn it. I can't believe I can't think of it. I I I I I love the game. I play it a lot. I know the theme song and everything. Uh oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, they say it. They say it at the beginning. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my god, I can hear the voice, but I can't hear what he's saying. <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll just we'll think about it. after we after we're done filming news. That's when I'll come to me. So all the comments could be like, "Oh yeah, you mean this game?" I'll be like, "Yeah, that's the game." Enter the country. Nope. Do 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 do. You guys don't play this game. You guys don't know the theme song. Do 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 do. That's gonna drive me nuts. But that's it, guys. That's the news. Uh, that's your that's your update on Warcraft Three Reforged and uh and the coronavirus. So, th thank you for watching. Well, I actually got through almost an entire, entire like news like length. I thought this was gonna be like a quick twenty five minute just romp, <laughs> and that's it. Um, in any box custom USBs, I I saw any box boxes. Uh, if you told us the name of the game, we could look up the song. And you could tell. <laughs> gotta play Oni until you remember. That's right. That's right. The, the artist of the game was doing a bunch of promotion art for Adult Swim uh, uh, and Rick and Morty. Which game was that? Um, Monster Hunter like. No, it's not Monster Hunter like. No, it's a side scroller platformer shooter. Like like Metal Slug. It's basically Metal Slug, but an RPG ish. Procedurally generated maps. This is gonna drive me fucking nuts. Whatever. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today for the news. This is Chat, my lovely co-host. Looking great today. Give me a little slap on the butt there. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Mercenary Kings! That's what it is, and that's exactly what the guy says at the beginning. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Also, by the way, Monster Cloud, Mr. Bacon himself. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, we're done. My name is Mike B, aka Phony from aka Mike B on all the things, aka Mike B photo on OnlyFans, and that's it. I'll see you guys later, okay? <laughs>